So the combination of bortezomib, uh, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone is currently considered to be a standard initial treatment for patients with um, newly diagnosed myeloma. And this is based on improved overall survival from the prior phase three trial that showed that VRD is better than RD. Now, there have been phase two trials that suggest that carfilzomib is a better proteasome inhibitor uh, when combined with lenalidomide and dexamethasone based on um, both studies in relapsed disease as well as um, uh, in newly diagnosed setting. But in the newly diagnosed setting, it has been phase two trials. Um, so we wanted to see in a phase three trial if KRD is better than VRD for the injection therapy. So we designed this randomized phase three trial to compare the progression-free survival uh, and the um, responses um, between uh, KRD and VRD. In addition to the progression-free survival, we also wanted to look at the differences in the response rate, the overall survival, uh, minimal residual disease negativity rate, duration of response, as well as um, time to next treatment. The, in addition, we also looked at some quality of life metrics. Right, so this clinical trial, uh, as I mentioned, excluded patients with high-risk disease. Uh, we, did, we only allowed patients with translocation 414 amongst the group of patients with high-risk disease. Uh, patients with 1416, 1420, deletion 17P, high LDH and plasma cell leukemia were all excluded from the current clinical trial. So the results of the trial cannot be extrapolated um, for um, use in the... Uh, for deciding whether VRD or KRD is a better regimen for patients with high-risk myeloma. Similarly, this trial was only designed for patients who are not uh, planning on going for an upfront autologous stem cell transplant. Um, so if you're thinking about injection therapy for an autologous stem cell transplant, um, KRD uh, or D VRD um, either would be um, uh, the, 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 question, uh, the, the answer to the question of which is better in that setting is unanswered uh, based on this clinical trial. Theoretically, doctors should combine different classes of drugs with different mechanisms to treat relapsed and refractory myeloma. So for treatment of my normal refractory to botulism, we would like to firstly consider choosing drugs with different mechanisms, such as nanolidomide, daratumumab. If these drugs are not suitable to the patients because of resistant to previous treatment or not available or to toxicity, cafezo should be considered being included in the regimen for these patients. Although Cafezo and Bortezomy are both prednisone inhibitors, they have different structures and a little different mechanisms of action. Unlike in newly diagnosed multiple myeloma, in in DIVO study for refractory and relapsed multiple myeloma, a randomized Phase 3 open labeled multi central study to compare covizomy and dexamethasone versus botizomy and dexamethasone. This randomized phase 3 study demonstrated that a statistical significant and a clinical meaningful improvement in progression free survival for covizomy and dexamethasone versus botizomy and dexamethasone in relapsed and refractory multiple myeloma. Subgroup analysis showed that in refractory and relapsed multiple myeloma, outcomes are improved when receiving treatment with covizomy compared with botizomy, regardless of the number of previous therapy lines or previous exposure to botizomy or nanolidomide or renal function of patients. OS was also longer with KD56 versus VD using age and the site and the site of genetic subgroups 
and according to the number of previous lines of therapy, previous botulinum exposure, pre previous nalanidomide exposure, and nalanidomide refractory status. Some point should be emphasized when interpreting the result of this clinical trial on carfilzomy. When an endeavor study for refractory and relapsed multiple myeloma, the dosage of carfilzomy was 56 mg per meter square. In both clear and endurance study, carfilzomy dosage was 3.0 should be emphasized when interpreting the result of this clinical trials on carfilzomy. One, an in vivo study for relapsed and refractory multiple myeloma, the dosage of carfilzomy was 56 mg per meter square. In both Cleveland and endurance studies, carfilzomy dosage was 36 mg per meter square. So the best dosage is still on the investigations. Two, an in vivo study for refractory and relapsed multiple myeloma. Patients resistant to botulism were excluded in the trial. So it remains unclear whether carfilzomy could benefit patients with multiple myeloma resistant to botulism and how high carfilzomy dosage should be taken in these patients. So in the future, we should pay attention to the role of carfilzomy in special populations of multiple myeloma, such as patients with high risk cytogenetic abnormalities, especially when they are refractory to botulism. So this would be mostly in the setting of um, relapsed disease, I presume, because in the newly diagnosed setting, um, the proportion of patients who don't get um, uh, a response to a triplet drug is uh, 10 to 15 percent, as we saw in this trial as well. So for those group of patients, we certainly can um, uh, switch to another class of drug, but uh, more than likely a monoclonal antibody like daratumumab based combination would be appropriate. Similarly, in the setting of relapsed disease, if someone's re re refractory to uh, botasumib and carfilzomib, um, then uh, we should think about using a combination um, of it that includes a monoclonal antibody with um, an immunomodulatory drug uh, like lenalidomide or pomalidomide, depending on the situation. There are two main reasons to recommend lenalidomide in the first-line maintenance therapy in multiple myeloma. One is its prolonging PFS and OS. Another is its feasibility. There have been a lot of data supporting the role of botulinum in the maintenance therapy in multiple myeloma. In our daily clinical practice, we use botulinum in the maintenance therapy in patients with renal insufficiency, ones with high-risk cytogenetic abnormalities, in particular ones with double heat or triple heat diseases, ones not tolerant to lenalidomide, and in ones in which the response has room to improve. For example, if a, a patient's response remains VGPR after after nanolidomide maintenance, we could add a botulinum to the maintenance regimen. Right. So the botulinum um, as a maintenance therapy uh, has been studied in uh, a handful of uh, trials. There have not been any randomized trials looking at uh, botulinum maintenance versus uh, no botulinum maintenance. Based on the data that we have from all these different studies, uh, our recommendation currently is to use a botulinum-based maintenance in patients with um, high-risk disease, such as those patients with uh, deletion 17P um, and uh, 414 and so forth. Those patients, um, it would be worthwhile if possible 
to do um, maintenance with a combination of a proteasome inhibitor and an IMID. So our practice currently for patients with deletion 17P would be uh, to off to keep them on a combination of botasomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone till disease progression. Dr. Kumar, may I ask you a question? There are a lot of guidelines on myeloma in different countries in America, both NCC and guideline and M smarter consensus are well known. Many Chinese doctors take them as Bibles in the management of multiple myeloma. Do you have any comments on their differences of these two guidelines or how do doctors should follow them in their daily practice? Thank you.